welcome back to the manor entropians julian mcbain here and today i am going to cover something that was asked on my channel and i'm just going to verify who the person who asked the question was uh, let's go to studio beta here so tisha senpai Hilarious name, by the way. Asked, you can play the game for free to play free to learn the game first. And I answered the question there, but I kind of wanted to go. It, it was a good opportunity for me to come back and go, okay, let's go over the free to play things you can do in Entropia Universe. And so <clears throat> let's, let's just cover a couple basics. Things that are always available for free in Entropia Universe. You can always use it as a platform for, for social engagement. Other players here love to talk. <clears throat> if you give them a reason to chat, they will chat. How do I know they would be willing to chat? Because there is an entire section dedicated to it called Rookie Chat, and I guarantee the majority of people there are probably not rookies. This is a great way for you to find information. The people in this platform are extremely helpful. But it's mostly chatter, right? And of course, if you're a member of a society, you can use society chat. You can also locally talk if you're on the main. And people PM each other back and forth all the time. So... Quite frankly, it's probably a better social platform than Facebook because you can actually talk to folks instead of just posting cats. Facebook's probably going to sue me for that. <clears throat> That's okay. So what else can you do for free? Let's get into it. So I'm currently at Ithaca. Fort Ithaca? Is it Fort Ithaca? Where am I? Yeah, Fort Ithaca. And we are going to head down to Boreas. Boreas is down here. That's Boreas. Way to the south, it is not one of the initial teleporters. You will have to get a ride there. Alternatively, you can teleport to Isle of Troy and swim. I don't think there's any hostile fish in between there. I would have to check to be sure. But if you come up on, on shore here, there aren't a lot of mobs between you and the camp so let's teleport to Boreas not only that but a lot of players are willing to give newbies uh, a free sleep near ride there from the Isle of Troy uh, back when I started my first the first time I when I got brought to Boreas I was brought straight from Camp Icarus which is way the hell over here and so the first couple times I did it from there too that takes like half an hour it only takes like five or six minutes from the Isle of Troy. If, if, if you're giving rides, give it from the Isle of Troy. So this is Boreas. It's a nice little outpost in a mobile, one of Calypso's mobile outpost ships. You've got your Vive terminal, terminals up here that if you are going to sweat here, you will probably find yourself using rather frequently. I don't even remember which side of this ship is the front. I don't think it really matters all that much. It's probably the other side. <clears throat> anyway. See, it looks like it can get up and move. It never does. Just <laughs> ever. But it looks like it can. And they got the... Oh, yeah, because these are the engines in the back. And you sweat mobs. So you would pull out your, your sweating tool, which is the VSC Mark I. You get that as part of your initial startup. And you just... I've got it on the uh, the F repeat, and nothing will happen until you draw it. When you do start drawing, so these green bubbles will pop up. Uh, the bubbles themselves can glitch out fairly easily, so don't be surprised if other players. A lot of these, I would say, a lot of them. Some players have sweat bots, which is technically against terms of service, but no one really says anything because, well, ah, uh, you ran out of sweat. And then someone goes and has the turret shoot it. And then someone else collects another curb. I will say this. When you get to the point where you can hunt, curbs are some of the best things to hunt. They don't do a huge amount of damage. See, and then I got some sweat. Two bottles. Let's 
See, he's dragging it back to the, the circle. This is called circle sweating. I know it's very reminiscent of other things. And I just got more. And that time I got four bottles. So sweat <coughs> sells for, I think last I checked it was 1.2 ped per thousand. And I people will come out here <coughs> and they'll do their best to not really pay market value for it. I don't know why I'm doing this in my ghost armor. So I'm going to have to stop after this and uh, change. Because why, why would I want to wear this good of armor when I'm sweating? I should be relying on my skills. So let's take the armor off. That's why everyone out here is in like their underwear. Clothes don't take durability damage from being hit. Like, ever. But still, people come out here and they just do it in their skivvies. Um, people will try to undercut the value of sweat, especially here at Berea, so you don't have to go anywhere. If you're going to sell sweat, go to Twin Peaks, or better yet, go to Camp Icarus and Carney Bark. You know, just want to sell X number of sweat for 1.2k per... Uh, 1.2 ped per K. 1.1 to 1.2 ped per K. And that's going to get you the money you need for your next step. And this doesn't cost anything. I'm not using ammo. I have no armor to damage. I could die, but that doesn't really cost you anything except your dignity. Uh, which, to be fair, is a thing, but still. Um, whenever you're hit, it does break concentration, just like a D&D spell, because this is considered a mind force action. It does increase your mind force concentration skills, which will help you if you decide to become a mind force user. So those are complementary. I use Mind Force primarily for healing. As you can see, I'm already... Now keep in mind that I'm a level seven sweat gatherer because I gather an insane amount of sweat on Arcadia 10,000 bottles. For my passport, that took a month. And yes, that sounds like a long time, but keep in mind the higher level you are, the faster you will gain bottles of sweat. That bears repeating. The higher level you are, the less like the the fewer failed attempts you'll have and the more bottles of sweat you'll acquire over time and it's very important to keep that in mind as you do this because at first it's going to be very slow sweating is a skill just like any other skill in this game you have to be willing to take the time to grind it out embrace the grind big industry says embrace the grind you got to embrace the grind so we're going to finish sweating out this curb, and then I'm going to show you other places that you can sweat to actually get more skills for the effort. That being said, it will not be as fast getting the sweat. So it's a trade-off. You grind out more skills at a time, or you get more sweat for cash. How you decide to go about it is, is up to you. In the end, it comes out. I think it comes out fairly evenly. But as you can see, I'm doing a lot of it because I'm not getting hit as much. Oh, she died. Um, and so it's just one of those things you have to be willing to, to balance. You know, is it bottles per sweat per time achieved that you're looking for? Or is it total number of skills over time you're looking to achieve? And that's going to be the real, the real balancing act. Right? So... Just keep that in mind when you decide whether or not you want to do the, the sweat circles. This is actually going a lot faster than I expected. I might come out here and do some of this more because, uh, yeah, I'm burning through a lot of ped this month with migration. And this won't offset it a lot, but every ped counts, you know what I'm saying? But you see, because we're sharing the aggro, I'm able to get a lot more sweat. Okay, it's dry. And that's, and that's terminology from here, too. When the mob runs out of sweat, it's considered dry. And what this person's do is called, doing is now called swunting. And what that means is you sweat the mob dry and then you shoot it until it dies. Obviously. Now, this does cost ammo. But what it does is, is it balances out. the it, it strikes that balance between you spend a little, you gain a little. You will end up spending more than you gain doing swunting, but you'll also get more skills. 
Okay, so if you want to get more skills from straight sweating, you're going to come up here to Half Moon Cove. If you took the Half Moon, or if you're going to take the Half Moon Bay quest mission chain for your starter missions rather than doing the Camp Icarus ones, you will get Half Moon Cove. Otherwise, it's just a quick drive up the path, and in fact, I'll even show you, because you start with Half Moon Cove, and uh, what I'll do is I will take out my truck, and, uh, well, technically it's a Jeep, I suppose. It's not really a Jeep, it's more like a Land Rover. Come on. Oh, is this a no... No, this isn't a no vehicle zone. Come on. Okay. There we go. That was weird. No, it's, uh... This was, like, the original starter vehicle. Needless to say, it isn't the best steering... Doesn't have the best steering. So, okay, time for us to go down the beach. You can see there are some punies here that you can hunt. Oh, wow, they increased the mob numbers here. When they redo the, uh, they're redoing the, the missions. I'll have to come here to redo my puny mission. So, like, no one hunts up here. This place is practically dead all the time. Everyone's down at Camp Icarus. Look at all these mobs. And I know that, I think they've increased the spawn here because it wasn't this heavy before. So there is an actual road out here. Let me see if I can't find it. Oh, 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 oh. My, that's gonna cause my insurance rates to go up. Okay, so. You know, it's just a quick trip up the beach. We got some Dykaba. There's the road. And the player. And you've got this abandoned camp here that's actually part of the mission chain. And then... Huh. Oh, I bet that leads straight to... Uh, Cape Corinth. Wait a second. I think that was my turn. Nope, that's a windmill. That is not my turn. Okay. It's not like I can't go cross country if I have to anyway. As you can see though, it's really not that long a drive. I'm almost there. It's kind of picturesque, too, especially at night. This reminds me a lot of a place in Montana I used to live. Um, it's a town called Glendive. And it's a, it's a tiny, tiny city. It's got, like, 5,000 people. So I'm, it does technically qualify as a city. Um, very blue-collar town. Good people. Honest, hardworking, rough around the edges. Um... Not an easy place to live if you aren't able to cope with varying temperatures or weather. I took the wrong road. Huh, I'll be damned. Well, what they say. Oh, <laughs> my computer can't even keep up, it's lagging. And I made it. That was awesome. Snabble stops. Where did all the snabble stops come from? This tells you how often I drive there. You will only ever drive to this place once. Where the hell is it? Oh man. being attacked apparently like I'm sitting on the dot and I'm not there think about that for a second it's probably just like around this bend here 
Can't believe I successfully climbed that. There it is. Obviously, I took the wrong road. Now I'm up a cliff. Oh, can I stop it? Oh, I did too. Ha! So, don't take that route. There is a correct route. That was not it. Now, the real question is, is how the hell do I get down from here? Why? By taking the ramp, of course. I am a member of the International Cliff Jumper Society, but that looks like it would hurt. <laughs> oh, I came up the wrong side of it, that's why. Oh, well. I probably had to take that ramped road, and I didn't do it, and that was my bad. Okay, so we're in the area I was aiming for. Oh. How the hell are you so close to the gun and not dead? It's gotta be a glitch. Gotta be a glitch. Unless the gun is out. Is the gun out? Oh, the gun is not showing active. Ooh, that's interesting. So, this is the other way. And what I'm doing is I'm sweating the Sabakuma hatchling. Ah, there it goes. Apparently it was in like just the right spot. So we're gonna, I think this is far enough away from the gun. Honestly, when you sweat, you want to be in first person view when you're sweating Sabakuma. Cause these suckers move a lot. But as you can see, I'm getting the sweat gatherer skill. I've got a really high evade for these, so my evade skills aren't gonna go up, but for you, they, are, they will. And Sabakuma each carry, these, these hatchlings each carry 10 sweat. And in the meantime, he's hitting me. I'm gaining skills. It's For me, it's going to be a lot slower than a new player. For a new player, it's going to be... When I was a new player and I was out here doing this, it was a hell of a lot faster. And so... This builds those skills up while I'm gaining the sweat. And then when I'm done sweating the mob, I can decide, okay, do I want to drag it back to the turret? Which you can do. Or... Do I want to shoot it for the experience? And that's a decision you're going to have to make. When I was on Arcadia, I did swunting. It didn't quite balance out, but I got the sweat I needed. I got to do some hunting at the same time. Now, I was doing it for an entirely different purpose. Now I just drag him back to the turret. And boom. And I go and do it again. Easy as that. Easy as that. And you just do that over and over and over again to build your sweat up. See, now I've got 64 bottles of sweat. I mean, it's not a huge amount. That itself won't sell. But you just build it all up. And eventually, I still can't believe that they closed off the auction house from here. Just closed the top door. I used to come here all the time to use the auction. Because there's, like, no traffic here, so there's no lag. Bastards. <laughs> this is from an earlier hunt. I just added, say so I've got about, what, four? And as you can see, it's worth four peck. This this 4,000 is worth four peck if I TT it. But it's worth four, four to five ped if I sell it. Now, one recommendation, don't auction sweat. You have to crate the sweat if you're going to sell it on auction. It, it doesn't work out very well, at least in my opinion. I tried it. It just, just carny bark it at Camp Icarus. People will buy. It might take you a little while, but they'll buy. Or Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks would be even better. And so that is sweating. So the other thing I'm going to cover is fruit walking. And to do that, we are going to go back to Camp Icarus. So, fruit, of course, spawns on the ground. Dung also spawns on the ground. I think you'll find dung more on Amanthra, Amanthra, Amithra, the other place where all the owned land areas are. And, uh, so, let's put the tool away. Not that one. Unequip that. 
And so for sweat walk, uh, not for sweat walking, for fruit walking, what you're going to do is you're going to move away from whatever encampments you're near and go out to where mobs like to spawn. You can do it without being in the middle of a mob spawn, but I've noticed that they appear more frequently where mobs spawn. So if you're in a heavily hunted area where you're less likely to pick up aggro, you can do it that way. And you just walk. And then if you're at this speed, fruit will appear. If you're running, fruit won't necessarily appear. Now, fun fact about fruit walking and things like that. When you're hunting, if you're using a gun and you're walking backward, the fruit will appear while you're walking backward. And if you run forward, it'll actually disappear. True story. Had that, I couldn't figure that out for the longest time. Then I figured out why people walk for fruit instead of run. Let's see if the one that spawns around here is spawned. And you're just you're just gonna have to keep a careful eye out. They're pretty obvious. I mean, when you see them, the the first couple times you see them, you're not gonna really recognize them. But when you see them, you'll know. Like it'll be a big melon on the ground, or it'll be tomatoes hanging from a branch or vine. They're they're pretty obvious. Mind Arc did a good job of kind of making them easy to see. If you're moving at the right speed. Now the beauty of fruit walking is you've got a pretty good eyesight. You can see them from an okay distance. So you can just keep scanning. While you methodically pattern your way over an area. Kind of hoping we find one just so I can show you what they look like, but I can't make any. I've 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 got them and I've gotten some while I was hunting in other videos. Um, but I can't guarantee I'm gonna find any now because that's that's the thing is you can never guarantee. That's why it's free. But fruit sells for far more than sweat does, partially because it's a pain in the ass to gather. Fruit tends to. Sell, last I checked, fruit is selling for, I think it's seven ped per k. Seven pet per thousand fruits of all one type because you mix fruit with sweet stuff in order to make the nutrio bars for your pets. And pets, of course, have all their secondary skills and things like that. So pets are, even though compent is dead, pets still have a function. And my hope is that if that mind arc continues to show that they are smarter than the average bear and uh, implement more skills for pets or permanently learn skills for pets for those players who actually actually put the time and the pet into developing their pets. So yeah, this is fruit walking. And as you can see, I'm not very successful tonight. Um, but I was hoping to see it. Sweating is going to be probably the most efficient way to do it just because you really can't count on fruit dropping. Or popping and you can always guarantee that you're gonna get sweat if you take the time get catch a ride to Boreas ask for a ride most players if you're like hey I'm a new player I need I don't have Boreas will you take me there they'll say okay port to Isle of Troy and I'll, I'll hop you over to Boreas and most players will do it free of charge so there's that so those are the free things you can do in Entropia Universe. And then if you're going to build your pet from there, there's a number of ways you can do it. You can, you, can, you know, you turn it into ammo, you hunt, uh, you can mine, and mine, of course, you sell for markup. You can start buying and selling things on trade. You know, buy, buy 10 pet worth of stuff off new players and then turn around and sell it for the markup on Auction House because, not 10 pet, you have to buy 50 pet total. But, you know, you buy 50 pet total of stuff, you throw it on the auction for... 102 or 103 percent you're buying it off players for 101 because it's really tiny quantities and you just turn around and do the same thing and you'll make a little bit they'll make a little bit you're helping each other out they can continue doing their thing or you know i'm i i'm almost positive that mind arc is going to continue to develop things that you can do because they already do so just keep an eye out for what the next development is. So there you have it. The free things you can do in Entropia Universe. 
Use it as a social plat. Oh, that's right. I can't climb those. That's sad face. Sad panda. Use it as a social platform. Sweating mobs. And fruit walking. And then, again, use the ped you earned from that to turn around and do some more. And then, as for other things that you can do, like taxi service and stuff like that, I'm doing a write-up. Again, I have not decided how I'm going to present that. I've I could do it. I could release it as an ebook. I might even release it on Kindle. That's in the works. I actually need to get back to work on it. Uh, I've taken a couple days hiatus. Um, so that's all I got. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We are on the path to 13 million subscribers. So please subscribe. Guys, I really appreciate all the support you've been giving me. You all have a wonderful night.